The next speaker, Gregory Vincent. Um, Gregory is a pioneer of microfinance. He comes from a financial and political sciences background. And um, in 2012, 2010, um, he founded Sponsium.com, which uh, was the first European crowdfunding website. So here to tell us a little bit about that is Gregory. Welcome. Thank you, Virginia. Can you hear me? Yeah. Actually, I'd like to come back to um, one of the points you made earlier this morning, and I think that's the maze, which is quite obvious in the sense that it's, it links all the presentations, or most of the presentations we're seeing today and possibly tomorrow, and uh, this is the fact that technology uh, has been a key driver in opening up creativity. And um, I just want to look at that from a given angle, uh, which is the, um, the relationship of creators to the public. I think a, a way in which technology, a very big way in which technology has, has, uh, has contributed to open up creativity has been by fundamentally altering the relationship of creators, uh, whether it be designers, artists, or other forms of creative people, to their public. Um, up to a point where we see, and we've already talked about it to some extent, uh, that the, the, the border, the frontier, the, the, uh, the distinction between the two disappears, and so that creators become um, um, uh, the public and the public become creators. And um, so I just try to ask myself, you know, how is technology opening up creativity again from that angle? Um, the first thing I could, I could think about was that technology, and specifically the internet, of course, uh, encourages a very direct relationship from uh, or between, again, the creators, designers, artists, and the public. It creates a global stage on which you can showcase your ideas, your projects, and obviously get uh, feedback if you so desire from the from the public. And that's my that's the second point you can see on the screen. Um, obviously, an important part of what technology has been able to do is is it's really allowed or facilitated the involvement of uh, the general public in creation. Um, and I think that's. You know, partly what crowdsourcing is about, just not having a, a kind of public, a passive recipient of what's happening, um, of what's decided by other people, but uh, a public that's actually involved and from a passive recipient become, become an active uh, maker. So pushing that, that logic even further, I think we have uh, the third point, you see that on, the, on your extreme right, um, uh, which is uh, co-creation. Co-creation is, I think, when the public becomes the creator, or at least sections of the public become creators. Uh, one very good example of that, which everyone will know about, even though it's not, strictly speaking, artistic or design-related, is of course Wikipedia, which is the you know, um, global encyclopedia where readers actually are uh, the contributors. Um, so, technology has enabled all of that, and um, I think a new way in which uh, techn technology is enabling the public to take part in the creation is through crowdfunding, which is what I will briefly be discussing here. So, what is crowdfunding? Well, crowdfunding is, the English word is great because it, it really says what it does, which is that it's, it's about funding, it's about involving the public involving the crowd or involving different crowds into the financing of a given project. Whether it be you know, uh, a new design, a new film, a new play, a concert, or pretty much whatever you can think of. And I, I think some of you mentioned earlier that, and in fact, the Drew presentation was concluded in the idea that we need uh, to open up politics. I mean, Crowdfunding certainly has potential there in terms of getting people together and having sort of bottom-up initiatives uh, uh, from people 
to make things happen. So it's essentially about people power. It's about uh, the crowd uh, getting together and uh, contributing generally financially to a project and benefiting from it generally non-financially. And that's kind of the, it's an important asymmetry. Um, and if you think about it, crowdfunding is, is, is kind of the opposite of what we're seeing today in the world of banking and finance. Uh, it really turns finance on its head in the sense that, <coughs> excuse me, in the sense that um, traditional finance or production of, of, of the arts uh, tends to be controlled by, I would say, a few men in suit, and they are the ones putting sort of big stakes into a given project and expected financial returns from that. Crowdfunding is pretty much the opposite of all of that. Uh, you don't have a few people, you have a lot of people engaged. Uh, it's not about all men in suit, in the sense that it's honestly about a bunch of self-selected professionals, or so-called professionals. It's really about pretty much involving anyone. And um, it's, also, um, it's also a way of um, encouraging everyone to participate because you don't have to come up with big stakes. You know, uh, the idea is that anyone from even from a few euros can actually contribute to a project. Uh, and finally, the public doesn't necessarily, is not necessarily there to uh, benefit from the project financially. Uh, it's there primarily because they enjoy the projects and they enjoy the rewards that are offered by the project. And that's the point I want to make about crowdfunding is, is that it really relies on um, essentially offering in-kind rewards to the general public, rewards that are linked to your project in order to fund your project. I think that's probably the most simple uh, definition that I can think of. So what kind of rewards are we talking about here? Well, rewards can be pretty much anything and everything, as long as it's legal, and that, uh, that means that you can't sell in countries like Spain, the UK, Germany, France, so most of the European Union, you cannot sell royalties or anything of the sort. So it has to be something tangible. Uh, so it's a great way, actually, rewards can be a great way of pre-selling what it is that you're offering to the public. So a specific design, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, a chair, a film on which you've been working, you can pre-sell the DVD of the film to the public. Um, you can, if you uh, are um, a theatre company, you can also invite people to the, to the show, offer VIP um, tickets to the show, I mean, all sorts of things. It's really that the limit there is your imagination as a creator. Obviously, we try and keep a link with the project because people will be sponsoring you because they feel connected somehow to the project. But in a few words, that's really the, the very heart of crowdfunding. So here you can see on this page, which was uh, taken from, uh, um, it's an independent film, which is currently being listed on, on, on Sponsum. Um, one of the rewards for, well, this is a sterling uh, reward, £50, you can get a signed DVD, uh, and a bit more than that gets behind the scene shoot, etc. But here you're free to set up your pricing. Uh, it can be cheaper than that, it can be more expensive than that, depending on who you think your public is and how much you think they're willing to contribute. So that's the film I was mentioning. Uh, this actually got funded uh, last week and got a total of, I think, about £11,000, so that's €14,000. Actually features, features one of the, uh, the, the, uh, the cast from Harry Potter, and one of the bad witches. Um, and obviously the interesting point about crowdfunding is that it's not just an idea. Uh, it's, um, it involves a lot of ideas. It's a very fertile ground, I think. I think it's only the beginning of something much bigger. But it's something that really works. Um, so I set up Sponsum.com a couple of years ago, as uh, Vienna mentioned, uh, in, in August 2010. And at the time, there was no European crowdfunding website. We mentioned uh, uh, other sites such as Kickstarter, who are very good if you're based in the States. 
not so good if you're based outside the US for practical reasons. And uh, since then, we've actually helped fund over 400 projects, uh, raised over uh, 1 million euros. Um, we started with mainly a public of filmmakers, probably because they were sort of, they seem to be better informed about crowdfunding and, and its potential. Also because uh, crowdfunding is, um, as, at least as practiced on Spontum, is quite a visual thing. So uh, people working in the visual arts uh, can present their, their ideas and can feel comfortable, I think, about presenting their ideas. But it's really spread beyond that, and that's the important thing. Uh, we're getting more and more uh, projects uh, from especially theatre, photography, um, as well as music, so we new albums, concerts, and, uh, and spreading beyond that as well, so even political projects. Uh, we had, for example, uh, a rock album featuring the guitarist of Rage Against the Machine, who those who uh, um, know about this, this band, uh, basically was supporting the Occupy London movement, so that was kind of wrapped into something much bigger than music, but using music as a way of federating people. There's just a few examples, I don't know how much you can see, of projects we funded. I mean, and, and some of them really are quite unique. For example, the one you can see at the top, top left is in fact is an archaeology project it's called Deep Venture. And it's, uh, it's the world's first crowdsourced and crowdfunded archaeology dig. Um, these guys actually raised what is it? Uh, it's 27,000 pounds, so that's about 34,000 euros uh, in a three month campaign. So essentially, they got people who were interested to come to the dig, they could come to a weekend, a day, learn about um, archaeology and how to dig stuff. And, and by getting these people in and offering other kind of rewards, they actually funded the dig for which they had permission. Just to show you the the, the, the wealth and the breadth of uh, the kind of projects we get on the site. Now, that's a kind of typical page. Uh, uh, again, this is an independent film um, by someone called James Moran, who is um, who's actually written a few episodes of uh, for BBC, things like Torchwood and Doctor Who. And uh, he's, uh, he's decided to uh, give a try to the whole crowdfunding element and uh, found his next short film on the consumer. And this has been there for just, just over a week and was funded in about 40, 48 hours. Um, as you can see, you know, um, what, what, do you need, what do you need to actually crowdfund a project? Um, the first element you need, on, at least on consumer, what we require is actually uh, a video. Uh, the video doesn't have to be professionally made, it can be something just you know, out of your, your webcam, but we do require it because um, as there is, no necessarily, there, there is not necessarily a direct relationship, physical relationship with your public, we think it's important to create rapport with the public through the video, that people show their face, to create trust with the public, and of course explain what it is that they want to do. So that's what the video is there for. And I'll just give you a, a brief sample. If it works, because we got exactly the same system <laughs> as you, uh, and it looks like it's going to work. Example, this is an example of a pitch. Hello everyone, I'm James Moran and you've caught me at a completely unstaged, unrehearsed, spontaneous moment. You probably know me as the writer of Severance, Copies vs. Zombies, Tower Block, and episodes of Doctor Who, Torchwood, Spooks, Primeval, and many, many other fine, fine entertainments. I wanted video clips to kind of appear around me when I said that, but I don't know how to do it. This is exactly why I need help from you. I'm here to raise money for a short film so that I don't have to go out there and sell myself on the streets of movie land. Please don't make me do that. There are evil producers out there with big cigars. Some of the things they do to writers are horrible. Like shoving down my and making my was with massive purple and getting lit. 
if you help me fund this short, then you will be part of it. And you can say, I helped to make that. Just think how popular you'll be with all your friends. And if they're not happy for you, they're not your friends. People keep saying I should write something nice and lovely. So this short film is a romantic comedy. Okay, it's a romantic comedy about a serial killer, but I'm trying, I'm trying. It's dark and it's funny and bloody and it's silly and I really hope you like it because deep down, I just want to be loved. So, read the text down there, have a look at the rewards over there, or possibly over there. I'm not quite sure about the whole way the screen keeps flipping around. And hopefully there'll be something to tickle your fancy. If you can't donate, that's absolutely fine, but I'd really appreciate it if you could send the link around to spread the word. If you don't, I will find you. But no pressure. So please donate, and or spread the word. Thank you, I love you, triumphant freeze frame! version. We have more sophisticated videos as well uh, for people to ensure their skills, filmmaking, but uh, just to show you that you really, the only thing you need is a bit of imagination and a webcam and that works. The, obviously the, the second requirement uh, to uh, get your crowdfunding page going is to have to think about the rewards. I mentioned that as really as the core element of, of crowdfunding, that's how you draw people in that's uh, what people will be looking at. Uh, so rewards, uh, I mean, a good, a good idea is to, is to try and, and think of a range of rewards that will appeal to uh, different kinds of publics, from uh, someone, you know, the kind of student who may be broke, to an organization that's willing to uh, pay quite substantially more uh, for maybe publicity. So I think that's pretty much what uh, what James has done there, uh, you can't actually see the whole, the whole screen there, but it goes down quite a long way. And uh, essentially there's something for everyone, from largely symbolic rewards for uh, five pounds or more. Um, so essentially you shout out on the website saying, okay, thanks for helping, to uh, much more substantial rewards, including uh, the actual DVD. Uh, I'm not sure if he does any sort of product placement, but a, a good way of using crowdfunding is, you know, if, if that's okay, of course, with a, with a creator, is to possibly sell advertising um, um, on the, uh, through, through the website. The, the, the average sort of price of a, a reward sold on Sponsum is about 60 euros, which is actually quite high, if you think about it. So that's probably higher than what I expected. Uh, it's also in line with, I think, what we found on US websites. Uh, the median, which is one of the most frequent, is lower. So you do have a portion of the public that provides sort of slightly larger stakes. Um, the other things we'll need from you is obviously a short description, uh, a time frame, the maximum is 90 days. Uh, there is a deadline because, first of all, projects have to be, have to be made, the funding needs to be uh, obtained. And also, uh, the deadline effect is very important, actually, is in getting people involved, in getting the, the adrenaline going, both at the release of the project and also just before the end of the project, when people say, okay, it's 48 hours left, 24, 3, 2, 1, and that really helps generate a lot of um, a new hits and, and uh, sales and rewards as well. Uh, obviously, another element is the funding target. You need to think about your costs and factoring the cost of your rewards in, in uh, thinking about the funding target you're going for. Just a few practical elements. Um, now, when talking about crowdfunding, or even when going to a crowdfunding site such as Consume, people always or generally are interested in the funding bit, which is understandable. So people come to us because they need financing, uh, 
But what's very interesting is that the same people, as they go through their campaign, will very often change their mind about really what they are getting from the site. Uh, so successful projects getting what they want and more, um, the project creators will come to us very often saying actually the main benefits from the campaign was not necessarily the funding, it was actually the awareness that was raised. So the fact that we publicized this project, that it's been across the web, social media, and people have been talking about it. And so, so that we were able to actually expand our public beyond our existing social network, beyond our existing um, public. So raising awareness really is, uh, is absolutely key. Um, the, this is just uh, an example of a tweet, uh, uh, one of the projects we got. This is a tweet from Kevin Spacey, the actor. He was actually tweeting about uh, the theatre project that we had on nine months ago. Uh, and um, so, so just to say, uh, Kevin Spacey did not contribute specifically to this project uh, financially, but he contributed in another way by spreading the word. So, um, and it's important to keep in mind that uh, the, the, the way in which uh, people can contribute is not necessarily strictly financial. Uh, again, going through campaigns, talking to people, realize that uh, some of the backers um, often offer more than financial, um, financial benefits to people. We've had people offering things like illustrations, want, or wanted to be part of the, uh, compose the music, so essentially becoming co-creators uh, in the project. And from the point of view of raising awareness, I mean the beauty of crowdfunding, as opposed to doing that kind of on your own and in the dark, is that you can show precisely these people on your page, you can show to the world that uh, there are X people, number of people, who believe in what we do, and actually put the money where the mouth is. They are committed to it and are ready to pay for what we're doing. And some of them are very passionate and you know, tweet about it, will blog about it, will offer more than money. But um, you have this thing which is sometimes called third party validation, which is that you're able to show the world that it's not just you and your mum maybe believing in what you do, it's also a bunch of other people. And that's very important, even if you're planning to tap into uh, other sources of funding or um, broadcast your idea in, in some way. So that's all part of the, the raising awareness thing. The, the, I mean, one aspect of that is that uh, throughout the campaign you also see uh, a number of people becoming the advocates of the project. So people we don't necessarily know, but we are going to defend the project uh, on social media, on the physical world. And, um, and that's great because their word has more power than yours in the sense that uh, if they're not necessarily the creator, uh, they, were, they were, will carry a lot of, of, of weight. And so we need to cherish this kind of, oops, this kind of uh, advocates. Now, uh, why use a platform? And after all, you, know, you can set up a website and do crowdfunding on your own. It's going to be a bit of work. Um, so one of the big advantages of a platform is that we take a lot of work off people's shoulders, so we don't have to worry about payment system, legal compliance, servers working, technology working. We know that it's touch and go. Uh, so it's good that you have a team of technicians actually carrying out these things. But the main main point about the platform is that. Um, platform like Sponsume is really acts as like a sort of amplifier, which is the picture you can see here. It helps you go beyond your social network. And that's a very, very important point. First of all, the platform has visibility. Secondly, because we have all sorts of different projects, and sometimes different projects in a given field, uh, we generate cross traffic. So someone maybe was indicated to come to the platform to see one project will end up seeing your project. Oh, actually, that's quite cool. I'm going to share it. Maybe we we'll, you know, won't participate in that financially, but we'll share it and or even buy one of your rewards. So the idea is that the platform really amplifies the noise that you make um, as the creator and, and the leader of the project. 
Um, we also assist you in terms of giving you analytics and other tools that uh, enable you to go a bit further. Sponsum has got a, a, one of the biggest network, probably the second biggest after Kickstarter uh, in the world. Uh, we've got 40,000 followers on Twitter. So we, what we try and do, unlike what I think most platforms do, is actually be involved in that and push our best projects to our existing network. So again, to try and go beyond your um, existing public and social network. Very briefly, what makes a successful campaign? Well, you can think of success in two ways. Financial success in terms of yeah, raising your target to more. Uh, but as I said, you know, you may not raise your target and still have had a very successful campaign because you've raised awareness. Uh, so you've got lots of viewers and people interested in what you do. And in fact, these two dimensions are very much connected. Uh, we find on the site that pretty much one view, one hit on a project page generates it's actually one, one pound, so it's more than a euro, so 1.2 uh, euros per hit. Obviously, it's not everyone contributing on euro, but on average, it gives you a sense of, of, of what you get. Uh, what makes it work? Well, um, it's, there is a bit of legwork to be done by the uh, creator of the project. Uh, it's very important to start, it sounds very obvious, but it's extremely important, and some people don't seem to get it, to start uh, publicizing your project within your social network in order for it to go beyond that. Uh, and um, again, we help, but we can't replace that. We can only amplify the, the noise that you make. So a crowdfunding platform is not YouTube, in the sense you don't put your project there and wait, and people give. That will not happen. You have to do a bit of work, and, and try and keep it steady over the, whatever, 60 or 20 days, 60 days, 90 days for which you're campaigning people tend to publicize a lot at the beginning and before the deadline they go like, you know, deadline is coming up. Uh, it's very important due to the structure of networks to keep a steady, 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 steady pace. Use um, things like Twitter, Facebook, the sharing functions on the page. Um, and it's great if you already have built that before your campaign. And, well, I need to conclude the uh, sponsor is it's based in London, uh, and it's been really sort of trial on the UK market, but it's really expanding beyond that now. We're offering, unlike your site, Euro funding, which means that you're not wasting money on exchange rates, uh, and soon we'll have a properly multilingual uh, site. You can only already list, and we have a few bilingual Spanish-English uh, projects on the site, but we'll have a truly multilingual platform very, very soon, in about a couple of months. Uh, and if you have any question, please ask me, or you can just go on Twitter, at Sponsu, um, or even just ask on the website, and we'll get back to you. Thank you very much.